It's time for The Story Behind the Person, featuring lively, in-depth conversation with compelling guests from our community. And here is our host, Jonathan Van Bilsen. Hello and welcome to this episode. My guest today is Matt Passifume, who together with his wife, Stephanie, own and operate Applewood Farm Winery, a very successful venture with a great history. We'll be right back after these messages. Top care with top stylists. Book your next hair appointment with Port Perry's award-winning hair salon, Rosario Greco Styles. The hair experience you deserve. Book today. Call 905-985-0099. Not all Canadians have the time nor desire to manage their finances. And often, that responsibility is up to financial professionals. Our goal is to help Canadian families achieve a happy and successful financial future. Visit us, the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management. Welcome back. As I mentioned, my guest today is Matt Passifume, the co-owner of Applewood Farm Winery. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So I, I don't know that much about the wine business. I know a lot about wine because I really enjoy it, but you're relatively new to this area. Three or four years, I think you've been here now, right? That's right. Four years now. And, but you've been in this business for a long, long time. You had a winery on the other side of... Uh, in Stouffville. In Stouffville, yes. that's right. So let's, let's take it back a bit. Um, so obviously, Passifume is an Italian name, so I'm assuming you were raised on wine with cereal as a kid. <laughs> a, a common, a common uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, no, we, you know what, not a big wine family growing up. Is that right? My neighbors, also Italian, I remember the, uh, the old known over there always pressing grapes and the demijohns in the basement and all that. The, but no, I was the first winemaker in the family. I did start rather young. Okay. Uh, <laughs> About 13 years old, I had a fascination with it, and I, uh, right? yeah, and I, we grew up on a fruit farm. So, I where did you grow up? Where about in in Stouffville, basically okay. uh, just on the east end of Stouffville. Yes. Okay. Sorry, west end of Stouffville. Yeah. Yes. And um, so, while while you're going to high school, other kids are working at McDonald's and pumping gas. You're squishing grapes. I'm. Uh, I was working. Yes, working on the farm always, yeah. and uh, yeah, fruit, fruit everywhere. What kind of a farm was it, basically? We were a uh, pick-your-own-apple-and-strawberry farm at the time. Okay. So was, was farming difficult back then? Back then. You was know what? The, the nature of fruit farming has not changed that much. Really? Um, where you see the big changes is cash crop. Uh, fruit farming itself was very manual labor intensive and mm -hmm. still is. So fruit, I think of apples and pears and stuff like that. Am I right in that, or is it like? Oh, absolutely, yeah. and strawberries. Strawberries Strawberry. is a big one for us. Okay, and that's um, really everything is done largely by hand. Mechanical harvesters are sort of specific to the type of fruit you're harvesting. Okay, blueberries harvest very well like that. Really, cherries harvest very well like that. Well, okay, um, apples. If you're juicing them, you could uh, you can sweep them up, right. but if you're picking for market or for quality eating it really has to be picked by hand because they would uh bruise, they bruise exactly yeah, of course of course so i imagine you have a whole bunch of people in the fall for apple picking who come in to work the farm as casual uh, labor at that time so what we do because our farm here in port perry or in seagrave as we are is uh a pick your own farm mm -hmm. so our strawberries are all pick your own Mm -hmm. My kids, our kids are actually our labor force for picking things <laughs> like our strawberries and our new crab apple plantation. There are laws about that, you know that, eh? There, there are, are, but yeah. uh, you can squeak by when you're your own. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, <clears throat> okay, so your family had the fruit farm. So was it a, a place where you could go and pick strawberries and things like that? As, it as was exclusively pick your own, yes. Yes, okay. we, uh, we, I remember growing up we sold a little bit to markets, uh, right. the odd store here and there. But really, it was almost exclusively pick your own. Interesting. I know it was a big thing when I was growing up to picking your own strawberries. It's a fun adventure, right? It's not just, you know, it, it's, exactly. it's, it's a whole day. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's an experience. And so was it, do you have siblings or were you just by yourself? No, I grew up, uh, there were six of us, yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So your parents had a lot of help on the farm. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was, uh, there was always something to do for sure. Yeah. So how did you get into the, the wine business? Like, how did you, did you just decide one day I'm tired of picking strawberries, I'm going to start squishing them instead? It was just a whole string of poor choices, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, I grew up, uh, you know what, I wanted to get into the fish industry. My background's in fisheries biology is where I ended up going. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I did 10 years with the m and sort of prior to, and even when we jumped into this, um, I grew up 
doing a large, uh, I was at the farm and I was at a fish farm back and forth. Okay. Uh, and the wine sort of came about, you know, one day my brother came home with a beer making kit. Okay. And uh, he was a little bit older than me. I'm like, you can make beer? But he had all this stuff and I'm like, you could probably make wine too. Right. And I uh, picked a bunch of fruit and I threw it in there. And you know what? It turned out pretty good. Yeah. And that's, that's always a, it's like going out and getting a hole in one for your first game of golf, right? It's, right, right, right. It right. sets the stage. Which we do regularly. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then the, uh, the next 10, 15, 20 batches were actually very poor. But I knew, I knew there was prospect. Right. Uh, so there was a potential there. And I did, uh, I pursued it and uh, made it for years and years. And then once uh, my wife and I were married, we started a winery on the farm I'd grown up on. So my parents' property. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And that's still in, and that's in Stouffville. Yes. Um, and you said, just to back up a bit, you said MNR, Ministry of Natural Resources? Yes. All right. Um, so in the fisheries, um, so what would you, you worked for them? What, what was your job? Like, what did you do? So my, absolutely. I was, uh, in chart. Well, we basically stocked Lake Ontario and all the tributaries of Lake Ontario okay. with salmon. Oh. Uh, so we grew, uh, Chinook, Coho and Atlantic salmon. Okay. And we'd go out into the rivers and we'd actually collect the spawning, uh, adults of right. the Chinook and the Coho. The Atlantic salmon were kept in house, right, and then you release them into the lake, and then we'd uh, rear them for a little bit and release them back into directly into the lake or into tributaries of the lake. Interesting. So I guess that's an ongoing process in Ontario um, with with all kinds of wildlife. Absolutely. And if you think about, um, there's different approaches to uh, fisheries, but in Lake Ontario, it's largely put grow take is what they call it. That's right. Put grow take. Okay. So you're okay. you're supporting a fishery. Right. So with the Pacific salmon, uh, the Chinook in particular, they are uh, obviously not native to Ontario. They're a West right. Coast species. Uh, but they grow very well in Lake Ontario, and they create a huge fishery. Okay, so, so the term wild salmon and, and uh, whatever the opposing term is, farm-grown salmon. Yes. Um, so because you, you sort of raise them or you, you take them from somewhere and put them somewhere else, are they wild salmon? They, they would consume? effectively be a wild salmon, okay. absolutely. The farm grown really never leave a cage. Okay, oh interesting, okay. So is one better than the other from a taste perspective? Like there's, um, there's it really depends on what you're looking for. Okay. I, I personally like, my favorite fish is a wild caught sockeye salmon from the west coast. Okay, wow. I, it's interesting, I had no idea that your background was in that. And you did that for about, uh, I did ten that years? for 10 years. Okay. And the way I see it, they're both wet. You got yeah. wine, you got fish. It's, it's, exactly. They exactly. go well together. They both go in your mouth, right? Yes. One way or another. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just let that one go. Um, <laughs> so now, where, what, where was the farm during this? Like you. So that was during, <laughs> funny that you asked that. During that time, um, we were absolutely going crazy. My, we were married in 98, I guess. Okay. I started with the ministry in 98 we opened the winery in 2000. Oh good so you had two good years of uh, relaxation. Right. And <laughs> our first daughter was born in 2000. My goodness. So yeah. my wife would be at the winery with Alora, our oldest. Right. Uh, sort of behind the bar playing with toys. Yeah. And she'd be serving customers and helping customers all day. Wow. And then uh, she'd come home, I'd go to the farm, I'd uh, be bottling, labeling, doing all those crazy things. Oh, it gosh. was a, uh, like it was a really hectic yeah. t first 10 years, absolutely. Now, now, somewhere in this process, you, you took the farm over from your parents, I take it? No, right? no, not at all. Oh. Um, so I was, we had the winery there, mm -hmm. and my dad was always actively, or my parents were the apples. Okay. And my wife and I grew strawberries there, uh, but no, that was uh, okay. It was sort of a mixed operation uh, okay. all along the way. So, so I'm picturing like your parents, your your six, your five siblings, you and your wife all living in one house together, one happy family. <laughs> Definitely but, uh, not. No, uh, very Italian. Everybody. Uh, my wife and I lived in uh, Mount Albert at the time, so I commute okay. to the farm back and forth every day. All right, it's not that far. I guess. No, so. no, it was, yeah. uh, it's funny. You know, it started out about fifteen minutes, and it ended yeah. up closer to half an hour. Is the uh, try doing it now? Uh, yes. Uh, where, where, where were you working for M and R? Where was that? I was working for the M and R out of uh, Stouffville. They had a okay, they so had a station in Stouffville, which is now closed. How how, how did you meet your wife? You know what? She uh, she actually moved in next door to a friend of mine. Okay. Uh, that would be grade ten. I met right. her. Really? 
and I was uh, I was sweet on her, and I uh, eventually got her to go out on a date with me, and we uh, wow. yeah we never looked back, never looked back. Yeah, good, good. She's a lovely lady. I've met her a number of times. Very, very, very driving force too in that business. She is. Right? She's she really very is. dedicated, and yeah. honestly, she is the order that keeps everything together. Yeah, and she's I'm a real a, uh, a real people person. She like, is like very easy to to, to warm up and you know and uh, chat with her and things like that. It's always nice. Okay, so here we are. You're working two jobs. Um, you're you're doing now. The wine you were making was it strictly from strawberries? Uh, we started with actually our first wine was a honey wine, a mead. Okay. Mead. All right. And, and I know mead is still your specialty now. Mead right? is a so, very big one for us right. now. Funny, uh, twenty five years ago almost, we made this mead, and I thought this is so great, and everybody yeah. looked at it and thought, "What the heck is that?" Yeah. And it it was a hard sell for sure. Uh, because people just didn't know. Uh, right. But we also made strawberry, apple, uh, cranberry, blackcurrant. We sort of played around with all okay. the fruits and we came to our, what you call sort of a core Like a group. signature sort of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the ones that really worked well for us. And that's what we've built the farm or the business on really for the and next what, 20 what years. And what would those be? Uh, the big ones would be strawberries, of right. course, and honey. Okay. Apples, raspberries, Black currants and cranberries. Okay, so no grapes whatsoever. We don't touch a grape. No. Interesting. Okay, because I, w <clears throat> and I guess I, I know better now. But but growing up, I you know wine grapes. It, that's the only way to make wine is through grapes and that. But that's not the case, obviously. No, so. if you, uh, it really depends on the region of the world you're from. Right. If you move into Eastern Europe, there's a lot of fruit wines. Yeah. Um, and the. You know, there's areas that grow grapes and there's areas right. that don't. Yeah. And where we are, uh, the winters are a little tough to grow the the wine grapes. Okay. And the fruit uh, does really well. And right. I love I love fruit wines. So so strawberries are like to me, strawberries are June and July kind of a thing, or late May, June in there. So yes. so do you grow enough to make your wine for the whole year? Because you're not gonna grow strawberries in October. No, of course. So, so. like like grape wines you have a harvest time okay. and a time when you can make those wines now the beauty of fruit wines is that we can make a we can make a strawberry wine in late june okay and then we can make a raspberry wine in july okay. and then we can make a black currant wine in august oh so you're constantly going wow. and effectively we it allows us to make much more wine with much less equipment interesting because you're reusing right I'm going to stop you there because we're going to take a, a break for a commercial. When we come back, I want to hear more about the mead process too. I don't know much about mead. So that will, that will be interesting. We'll chat a little bit about that. We'll be back right after these messages. Pet Value has a fleet of services to help you and your pets to live their very best lives. Visit Pet Value in Port Perry to discover a world of expertise, friendly staff, and everything you need for your pets. Pet Value. Your pet. Your store. Organizing an event? promoting your business, or just need to get noticed. At PP Print, our sale flags, lawn signs, and car branding will get you the attention you need. PP Print, more than just printing. At Voss, your independent grocer, it's all about hometown living and shopping. Owned and operated by Terry and Christine Voss, their newly renovated Port Perry store carries many local items to support our town and its residents. Welcome back. My guest today is Matt Passifume, the owner and operator of Applewood Farm Winery. Matt, before the break, we talked on some of the different wines and things that you guys make. The one that intrigues me is mead. I, I, I know I, I watch old historical movies and they were drinking mead back in the day. So obviously there's some history there. But. A lot of history. So, so what is mead? Mead is, it's a, a drink where the primary fermentable sugar is honey. So okay. that's the key focus of mead. Now within that category, you can have honey blended with other things such as grains or fruit, okay. or you can have a pure mead, which is just a fermented honey. Okay, so <clears throat> you need to have honey. So do you have bees in your uh, We have property? millions of them. Really? We have, uh, well, certainly well over a million. We have 32 hives of bees. Wow, that's uh, scary. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of bees. Yeah. So, and do you look after that yourself? Um, like with the you family? Know, we actually have a beekeeper that we work with. Okay. And I use all the honey for, uh, 
making mead and we okay. sell a lot in the store as well. And we keep, uh, yeah, I help him move so, stuff around, but he's largely there to make sure the bees are healthy and doing their thing. So take me through the process. So, so okay, so you've got some bees in a hive and they're making the honey. And then you take the honey out of that without getting too stung and you put it in a jar or a bottle or something. Exactly, yes. And then what do you do with it? So if you put it in the jar, then you just eat it like honey. Okay. But uh, we take it from the hive and we, honey on its own, if you've ever heard, is a perfect food. It will never go bad. Okay. Um, now, what we're asking honey to do by fermenting it is to go bad in a good way. Okay. So to get it to go bad in a good way, you have to add a little bit of water to that honey. Right. That's all you add to it. You, you, and then you have to bring yeast, and then we have to balance yeah. the acidity. And there's a lot of right. uh, little yeah. you know, nuances. Right. However, really the key to mead is honey and water okay. and time. Uh, mead takes a long time, I found. Does it? I find good mead does. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so how, many, how many bottles of mead would you produce in a season? In a season we produce, and mead I'm going to say is one of our, uh, it's one of our more popular items, okay. but one of our smaller runs because you don't drink a lot of mead generally. Right. Uh, we would produce no more than a thousand bottles a year. Okay, so that sounds like a lot of honey. It's a lot of honey. And how long is the process? Uh, we don't release the mead before it's five years old. Wow. Yes. So that's a big investment. It's for a the big first, investment. The first go around. Now, can you have a bad crop or bad year? Like did you, it, when the bees aren't happy? And actually, it's interesting you say that. You can have a year where the, the crop, the honey crop is low. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always honey, but sometimes you have a crop low. Right. Now, the big thing with honey is a bee can fly to this flower over here or to this flower over here. Uh, the net result is your honey is always different. Based on the flowers. Based on the flowers, based mm. on the year. Okay. Um, and quite often, the flavors that are in those honeys are not necessarily congruent. So what I find is time. Okay. Time is the key to all. And if you, uh, you make that mead and it tastes a little rough, a little jagged, wait. Okay. Um, and generally, three, four, five years in, yeah. You're starting to get somewhere beautiful. Our current mead is a blend of a five-year and a 13-year-old. So, so you can blend. So if after three years, it, the taste isn't to your liking, you can add different mead from different Different years, years. exactly. It's, it's it sort of like a blended scotch approach, right? Okay. Where you have, you're trying to build, uh, yeah, you can think of it like a blended scotch or even building a curry, right? Right. You have all these flavors, but you want them to work together and right. make it more and more complex and delicious as it goes on. And it must be good because your meat is very popular. It's yes, so, thank you, yeah, thank you. It, uh, and it's very tasty. Um, I have tried a bottle of it, it's very, very tasty. It's not something you drink like a wine, right? You, like I find you drink it more like a, an ice wine kind of a thing. Yes, like a, so we more. do have two meads currently on the shelf. One is a sparkling apple mead. Okay. Uh, so it's apples and honey and that you could drink with almost anything. It's right. sort of like a hard cider. The other one is one you had, which is that really thick, sweet, right. it's like drinking honey. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah so it's a treat. Yeah, honey with alcohol. Yes. Not a bad mix. No, it's it, not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I noticed that on, on your farm when you come in, you've got this massive uh, uh, range of sunflowers. Yes. Is that because of the bees? Uh, two reasons. Uh, my wife likes sunflowers, so okay. I plant sunflowers. That's a good reason. Um, and the bees love it too. Okay. And it's amazing for uh, the songbirds. Right now, all those sunflowers have gone to seed. Right. And it's absolutely filled with songbirds. Wow. That'd yeah. be beautiful. Yeah. So, I, I, again, I'm very naive in this area, but what keeps the bees from flying to Port Perry? Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, why do the they The bees hang out? will generally work within a, uh, say, a mile or two of the hive. As they long as there's... As long as there's stuff. forage, exactly. Okay. So if there's flowers, now we have them in an area, uh, we have them in sort of the, a meadow area of the farm. Right. And we've created about a three acre pollinator meadow on the property as well. Okay. Uh, to keep the bees happy most of the time. But they'll go right, um, they'll go wherever they want to go. You're not going to right. stop a bee. Right. They'll right. go as far as they have to go to get flower. And they're bees, they're not wasps. No, we don't. Uh, Wasps are a very different uh, yeah. creature and nasty. Okay, <laughs> won't go there. So, okay, so here you've got this successful wine business. It's going well. You've got a family business going in Stouffville. And for some reason, you decide to come to 
Skugog. Skugog, absolutely. And the reason for that was? You know what? It was time to do our own thing. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, this was still the family farm at this point, This right? is the family farm. So really all we had there was the winery. The winery, okay. uh, my wife and I started, and it's... So we sort of had this license in our name. Uh, but we were, yeah, just sort of using my parents' property there. Right, and your siblings are, are still working, some of them are working uh, on the farm. Uh, right? On and off, really. Yeah. My siblings all had jobs off the okay. farm. I was the only one there full time. Okay. Is the farm still in place? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely, yeah. So... So first of all, why this area? Why not Orangeville? Why not it, It's funny Hamilton? you ask that. Uh, we, in truth, when we first started looking, um, we were looking at York Region because you, you get sort of centered in an area, right? right? So that's where we thought we had to be because it, that's where we were. Right. And we're looking in York Region, and York Region prices were absolutely insane. Right. And my wife fell in love with this house uh, okay. that we're in, this property. Right. And she said, can we go, go look at this one? And sure, we can go look at it. Yeah. And we got there and thought, not bad. It's beautiful here. Yeah, yeah. like the, the, the topography out here is incredible. Yeah. The hills it's also on the, the paved road, right, which it is nice. It is. It's yeah. on the only, only paved roads yeah. from between, uh, there's like four, five dirt roads between us and right. the next paved road. And it's, it's 13th line? It's fourteenth uh, or sixth, okay. which is Saint Field Road. Yeah, Saint Field Road. That's right. Okay. Um, so, and and I mean, your place is beautiful. You got a fantastic. Um, can I use the word barn? Yeah, or, absolutely. Uh, which you built yourself, right? Well, we yes. restruck. Yeah, we, repurposed we, it. Yes. Yeah. We so we actually had it built by Mennonites. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So we uh, we designed the building mm -hmm. and uh, knew exactly what we wanted uh, because we had. A lot of time to think about it, right? Uh, and we we designed that building, and we had it put right there. And you know, by the time it was all done, it took us uh, the fall of twenty twenty, and you yeah. already know all the things you would have done differently. Right, of course. Of course. <laughs> it's a beautiful building, and the whole property is gorgeous. You've got a great patio. You have live music there too. We uh, do. We, uh, most Sundays we have live yeah. music. Yes. So so I can come there, and uh, I, I know you sell butter tarts, and that's my weakness. Um, so I can come there, have a butter tart, have a glass of meat or a glass of wine, sit Absolutely. on the patio, enjoy some music, and what could be better? Yeah, no, that's we yeah. really we look to bring a very, a very uh, earthy or farmy right. uh, experience. Just a nothing fancy, right. uh, just nice, beautiful scenery, and, and good you do music, wagon rides, fun. right? We do. Yeah, we yeah. have wagon rides. We have a yeah. huge corn maze. We do. Lots I saw of the corn maze. Yeah, that that's that's massive. I was I was in there for three weeks um, <clears throat> before I found my way out. The <laughs> the to me, it's it's not just a winery. It's an experience. It's a family. You have pop up markets too, correct? We do. And you have one you have, at Christmas. And we have one at Christmas and one in the spring. Right. And this is where where artists and artisans primarily come in and display their stuff. Is so again, this is my wife, Stephanie's. Uh, she looks after that, but she really does vet people very carefully because mm -hmm. she doesn't want two people selling the same thing. Right. And she's also, she doesn't want resellers. So she wants people right. that make something. Right. Uh, so eat, and they're all local. So, so it's, it's one of a kind, unique. Yeah, yeah. local, one of a kind, uh, everything from candles and bombs to right. treats, knitwear, all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah. That's great. It's, it's a fantastic destination. So, um, um, I, I guess the challenge is in moving from one place to another. It's not like you just call up the moving company, they pack your house up, they drive over, you unpack, and life goes on. It's a little different because all of your produce is over here. You've got nothing growing here that you're going to make wine out of, right? It was actually a staggering. And looking back, we're back at it, I don't know how we did it. Yeah. But we did. Yeah. Uh, you know what? When... When you have to do something, you do yep. it, right? You muddle through. And we, uh, we had a huge inventory in Stouffville, so all okay. that had to be moved. Right. And, of course, a lot of it was in bulk. It hadn't been bottled yet, so that had to be moved as okay. well. But that's also your cash flow while you're getting things going. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so we moved, uh, I guess, spring 2020. Okay. Uh, we moved everything over. Well, that's good. You, you chose the pandemic to move. I mean, that's always good. You know, you it's know? funny you say that because we thought... When we moved in, in April 2020, and the world shut down, we thought, you know what, that's okay. It's going to be yeah. two months. We can use this time to get, uh, get yeah. our stuff together. Yeah, it was a little bit longer. It turned months, out to be a little more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but you're right. It is good because, you know, especially because it's a family. Because you've got two kids, four kids? Four kids. Four kids. 
So you've got, you know, everybody's sort of sequestered together and, and you've got one goal and you can, you can work it. Whereas most people sat around and played with Zoom and watched Netflix. It's you know? true. We yeah. had, uh, the kids were instrumental there. We couldn't yeah. have done it without them because they, none of them were in school at the time. Everybody yeah. had school at home. Right. So we really did, you know, when they weren't in their mm. cl virtual classroom in the right. room, uh, we could pull them out and they'd help. We had to plant about, oh, I'd say 12 acres of fruit. Right. Uh, we had to put up the barn. We had to build driveways. It was it was a yeah. it was never ending. Yes. Oh yeah. I mean, you've got everything going at once, and the fruit is the big thing for me. I mean, you know, everything else you can build something and you get it finished and it's done. Fruit is just a long time. You have to constantly watch it too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So now you have people coming to pick strawberries. Do you do apples as well? We do. We do crab, about an acre of crab apples, but okay. that's for wine only. Okay. Uh, and then we do about three acres of mulberries, and that's picked okay. your own as well. And you also do cider, right? Oh, yes, yes. I, I assume you bring the cider juice in or the pressed apples so, in yeah, for that? So, yeah, so we, um, for that, we have a, a press that we work with, and they'll press the fruit okay. for us. And we bring, then we bring that back. Excellent. Matt, our time is up. Well, that was fast. It was very fast. It's always, it always goes fast, especially when it's an interesting uh, subject. And this certainly is. I've learned a lot. The meat thing is, is really interesting. I'm going to come up and, uh, and, and probably try that very soon because I have to get a, a jug of cider for Thanksgiving. So uh, we will, I will come up. Thank you very much for uh, being part of the show. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Thank you all very much for watching. Please join us every month right here on Rogers TV for the story behind the person. Take one. Hello and welcome to this episode. My guest today is Matt Passifume, who together with his wife Stephanie own and the... Nobody pushed a button. Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen. My next guest is Mass... Blah, blah, blah. Good, thank you. Perfect. Is that it? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Easy peasy. Yeah, we're just